I've been watching a street in my city that's being redeveloped. I'm not going to say more about the street's new design now, as I plan to review it in more detail in a later video. As I was riding down the street while it was under construction, I did notice something that I found interesting. Did you see it? Let's rewind the video and have a look. Do you notice that the entire street is under construction and the SUV lane is open while the bike lane is closed? I understand that this is a construction zone, so there are hazards in the area, but why is it deemed safe enough for people in SUVs, but not safe enough for people on bikes? The sidewalk is safe enough for people walking. I probably wouldn't have found this remarkable if this wasn't part of a pattern in my city. In December of 2021, the city installed concrete barriers to block the use of a bike lane. The lane was finished except signs hadn't been installed, so the city claims it was better to install the barriers to deter people from parking and driving their SUVs in the new bike lanes. Not that signs are a deterrent to drivers in my city from using bike lanes. It took a public backlash and one angry city councillor to have the barriers removed and the signs installed within 24 hours. I also recall being yelled at by someone in an SUV for not being in a closed bike lane. We were actually stopped at a red light with five other SUVs, but I was the problem. The bike lane in question was the downtown bike grid. It had orange wooden barriers blocking it. I think the section I was beside was finished, but another small part elsewhere in downtown wasn't. Or the ribbon cutting ceremony hadn't taken place yet. So why does keeping the bike lane closed until it's perfect matter? In each of the three cases I've mentioned, the road and sidewalk were open. Of the three projects I've mentioned, this road I'm showing is the furthest away from being finished, but it's still open to the public. There are signs stating that the bike lane is closed, but there are no signs expressly forbidding people driving, biking, or walking from entering the area. Keeping an area open during construction does come with a safety risk for anyone who uses the area. Closing the bike lane but not closing the road or the sidewalk does not reduce the risk to anyone, but increases the risk for people outside SUVs. A person on a bike either has to ride in the SUV lane or ride on the sidewalk. The former increases the risk to only a person on the bike, and the latter increases risk for a person biking and a person walking. I don't believe there's an increased risk of keeping the bike lane open as it's in the same state of completion as the SUV lane and it's too narrow for someone in an SUV to feel comfortable driving very fast. Closing the bike lane but not completely closing the area to all people sends the signal that people who ride bikes are second-class citizens in a city. My city claims that people walking are the highest transportation priority, followed by people biking. The lowest priority is people who drive. These priorities should dictate who has to detour around construction as well. People walking incur the highest cost in terms of time and physical effort when there is a detour. If the area needs to be completely closed to anyone, it should start with people in SUVs who incur the least cost in terms of time and physical effort. In the case of this particular construction zone, I would also argue that there should be temporary measures so that people on bikes can continue to pass safely through, as the detour does not meet city standards. My city has a policy that, and I quote, cyclists shall be detoured to routes that offer a similar level of comfort, safety, and travel distance as the existing facility. The detour for this construction project takes just one of those boxes. The detour isn't much longer as it's just one block to the north. However, the comfort and safety are definitely lacking. The existing facility has a two-way protected bike lane. Now, that's a pretty high bar for comfort and safety, but the detour route is especially bad. Whoever designed this road is like Otto from A Fish Called Wanda. I won't call them stupid, but they read the latest traffic calming manuals and did not understand them. The speed limit during the detour is wishful thinking. The poles don't narrow the lane to make driving fast uncomfortable. And since the road is very straight, it would be comfortable to drive at least 50 or 60 kilometers an hour. I also feel the poles are like a sharrow in that they make the road less safe for people on bikes. The impatient SUV driver cannot change lanes to pass a person on a bike. The poles ensure that any passing will require the person on the bike to be squeezed between the impatient SUV driver and a row of parked SUVs. Checking historical images shows that the poles were indeed installed at the same time this road became a bike detour route. Finally, as an aside, despite the intentions in my city's policies to prioritize active transportation, in reality, sidewalks and construction zones can be closed and paved over for the convenience of SUVs. And that's all I have to say about that. 
Please let me know in the comments if your city demands perfection in its bike infrastructure before people are allowed to use it. Also, does your city stick to its detour policy if it has one? Or does it just close bike infrastructure and let people figure it out for themselves? My city just loves throwing down cyclist dismount signs, which are supposed to only be used as a last resort. I'm interested to know if my city is making me develop a paranoia or if other cities have these odd behaviors. Thanks for watching.